Hello and welcome to Out of Spec Motoring. This is part three, but really part two driving across the country in the Model 3 performance. We're actually in Fremont, California. I was just at the Tesla factory all day. And then we're going back home to North Carolina right now. Now, when I last left you guys, I was in Phoenix, Arizona on my way to CES, and I said I'd make another video of the middle drive from Phoenix up to San Diego. I get the sands confused, San, San Diego, where we were staying, and uh, it really wasn't that eventful. I drove from Phoenix to Las Vegas, stopped at Kingman, stayed overnight in Arizona, went to CES for a couple days, had a freaking blast. It was just insane how cool this technology is, of course. Um, had some meetings, then we came up to San Diego, uh, had great conversations with the executive team from NEO, uh, spent hours at Lucid, and I can't talk about anything, but it's freaking amazing what they are doing. Seriously amazing stuff. Um, and spent time with uh, with Peter Rollinson, the CEO, of course, which was great. Just a surreal experience. And then to top it off, we spent today at Tesla's offices, finished off with a tour, of course, of the Fremont facility where Model 3 SX, can't talk about the last one, are being produced. So wild stuff. Now we are sitting at a Burger King right down the street from Tesla's headquarters, and we're gonna go back to North Carolina, just about 2,900 miles or so. And I don't know how long it will take, but let's look at the nav. We are here, we are going home. Let's see how long, oh my goodness, this is pretty far. Hmm. Trip planner has been incredibly fast. Oh, that, like, that's crazy. We're going back to Kettleman City. We did stop there on the way up. Insane, insane 40 stall V3, but that looks good. And then we're gonna take this sort of middle route. And the reason we can't just continue on I-40 through here are there are no superchargers through this section of the highway. It is really the last section in the United States of well-traveled highways that does not have superchargers. I have spoken to the man in charge of this at Tesla and he is working really hard on getting dots placed all through there, but it's crazy that this hasn't happened by now. stuck in the worst traffic ever in Gilroy, California. This goes on for miles, literally all the way up over here. It's crazy. We've been stuck since, well, it was sunny when we started this and now it's nighttime. So not the way we need to start this road trip, but that's okay. We are in Kettleman City. I love this place, it's so cool. Ramping up big time, 200 kilowatt, that's good. As long as we can stay here and it doesn't basically break the connection between the charger and the battery with the contactors. Look at this, 209, 10 kilowatt, whoa, this is good. We'll let this go. Let's plan our next stop, Kettleman City. It is 7.30 p.m. It wants us to go to Mojave. Yep, Mojave. Oh, I could just look here and see that too. And then to Barstow. Hmm. We'll be there. And then Baker. Is this Baker? Yeah. We'll be there at midnight. So we can stay. Let's just say we can stay somewhere between Baker and Kingman, which would be good because if we can avoid Kingman, this is a terrible supercharger. It's always just... <laughs> What's the best way to describe Kingman? It's just slow all the time. So um, you can hear the battery banging because it's cold out. So yeah, let's uh, let's try and push it this way. There's plenty of superchargers in between, so we'll just kind of go here until it tapers below 100, 100 kilowatt or so, whatever we feel comfortable with. Rip it, rip it, and stay overnight somewhere south of Vegas. Well, I don't think it's my car. I do think it's just the software for V3 needs some help. And this is 
pretty impressive. This whole line going all the way down, these are all version threes. All the version twos are over here. This whole place is great. Of course, you know, they have the inside lounge. You get a little code in your screen. You put it in when you go in the lounge. And I don't know if this is a rolling code, but all of these are solar panels. There's 40 plugins all together. And it is just a, look at this, just a beautiful place. This is interesting. It doesn't go in increments of five minutes. I've only seen this ever at version three superchargers. It does it by the minute. I don't know why this is different logic for V3 versus V2. Hmm. But uh, let's see, it is from Kettleman City to Mojave. Uh, okay, looks like we're gonna be doing a longer charge here. That's fine because I can hang out in the cafe and get some snacks, get myself a, I don't know, Tesla branded coffee, but I don't like coffee, so I probably won't do that. Um, to Mojave, is that this one? Let's see how many miles it is exactly. No, we'll remove all the charging stops. 135. So we'll go up to 65-ish percent. Yeah, because we wouldn't make it. I was really flying getting here, but we wouldn't really make it. So we'll give it another five minutes. So I've kind of sat here charging a little bit longer than needed. Again, we're not really in a big rush. Um, we're not charging very fast. We're at 60 kilowatt. I've been planning our charges, but look at this. This is kind of weird. It has us taking 40 down through here and then diverting all the way up and around on 15 I guess it's really not that much farther, but the normal nav, like Waze, Apple Maps, Google Maps, they all say just to stay on 40, which is what I'm used to. So I, you know, I've been to Yermo, I've been to, never been to Barstow actually, but I think we could just hit Barstow, stretch it to needles. I've been to this charger and then we're on the cannonball route that I've done before. And uh, then we can stay maybe overnight in needles or Kingman Again, I mean, it'll be late, but that seems like a better plan to me than going up through the middle of nowhere. So, hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, we'll see. I think we'll get to uh, Barstow and we can make our decision from there. So how far is it to Barstow? 203 miles. Yeah, we'll do one quick top up on the way in Mojave and then go to Barstow. That sounds like a good plan. That way we can just leave now, make it there 12%, no problem. getting over here we just used up all the extra juice we had in pure speed i guess we will take this one it doesn't really matter these are always so tight to get into i don't know how model x owners do it okay time to get plugged in we're at three percent this is a version two supercharger so let's see whoa open open hello Sorry, I bumped into you by accident. There we go. Juicing. Perfect. Charging up here, no problem. This is great speed. It'll ramp up at 11% to max. All right, charging options. We are facing north up. Is this Barstow? Here we go. Now, I don't know what the distance is from Barstow to Needles, but I can look, and I'm going to look at the elevation change because it doesn't really make sense to go up here and then all these back roads over to Kingman. I think we should try and push it from Barstow to Needles. Um, so let's at least get here and then maybe we'll stay the night in full charge there or maybe we'll do it along the way. But a fantastic charging session so far. I did a little research. Now I've done the Kingman, or I should say the Needles to Barstow. Well, actually we went to Yermo and it's quite hilly. This whole section can get pretty windy. So I think what we're, our plan is we're going to go to Barstow and we're gonna avoid this mess, 
we're going to go to needles and we are going to just do a really long charge in Barstow just to be safe, no reason not to, and um, because there are no bailout options through here, literally nothing. So we'll just do a pretty deep charge. When we were on the cannonball run, we charged in needles and then didn't weren't gonna make it to Barstow, so we had to bail out and charge over here to Yermo. But, um, hmm, yeah. This should be fine, no problem. I don't know why it keeps wanting to take us around. Well, this has gone by in no time. Yes, I'm eating some beef jerky. We are tapered down. We charged a little more than we had to because we were getting good speeds, why not? Uh, so let's go to Barstow. <laughs> Man, I feel like we were here for like two minutes. That's insane. All right, I needed more time to get stuff done. Hey, pretty good news, we're ripping it to Barstow to an 80, no problem, but um, was getting a little tired it's 10 30 at night but you know i'm still on east coast time it's really like 1 30 <laughs> uh, for for my brain so i found a hotel it's the last one before we get to kingman arizona uh which is where i stayed on the way to las vegas so i probably would have chosen the same hotel uh, was good but the one in barstow has charging with charge point they charge you uh, 24 cents a kilowatt hour that's fine i'll just plug in the car charge point it up um honestly for all the free electricity i get that's no problem and the hotel was only 48 dollars. i mean can you believe that it's a clean room hopefully it's a days in i mean they're not horrible like free breakfast the whole bit so 48 dollars. you can't beat that i'll get a good night's sleep and we'll hit the road in the morning but let's get out there first and plug in Check this out, not bad. The only hotel with a charger in the area. We have a pool. You know it's a good area because I literally could not go inside to check in. I had to use the window, but that's okay. Once the car charges up to 20%, I can turn sentry mode on. Here's the thing, this is only a six kilowatt charger. It's 30 amp at voltage line, which is 208 volts with a little sag. We're pulling 204. So this is like a 12 hour charge. It's 11 p.m. It will not full charge overnight on this, but that's fine. It'll, you know, whatever we get, we get. And if we need to run to the supercharger in the morning, we can, but I doubt we will. Let's unpack, go to sleep, and I'll see you guys in the morning. And just like that, it is the next morning. Uh, we are staying, like I mentioned, in Barstow, which is in the middle of the Mojave Desert, but it is below freezing right now. The car has been charging all night on the six kilowatt charge point. Hotels need 48 amp charging at least because uh, we're only at 80%, which is fine. I, we'll see if we can make it to needles or we'll run to the supercharger and there might be Starbucks down by the supercharger. So that works fine, but we'll see. Um, this hotel wasn't bad for $49. I'm alive. Pretty amazing. And now we are off to see how far we can push it. It's like 8.30 in the morning. I did sleep in a little bit longer than I wanted to, but hey, now we're rested up for a blast. So let's hop in the car. And if you see here, there's no problem making its needles as expected. So we are going to head out and not go to the supercharger. So I'll try not to hit this person and then we'll go. Oh yeah, right on our route. Didn't even have to detour an inch great way to start the day also this six series is super clean you never see these things that clean that is pretty cool this is the most efficient way because you're not having losses by regening or charging you're just kind of going which is great so pretty windy out but uh yeah we're just <laughs> this is kind of fun just coasting down using no energy perfect timing perfect state of charge 10 percent 
will ramp up at 11. The last time I was here, it was 117 degrees, quite a change. <laughs> the supercharger equipment was just so hot on that trip. We had to switch stalls so many times because these poor little cables were just melting hot. So let's, uh, let's see how this one does. These superchargers get worked so hard out here in the desert. <laughs> this equipment is just, oof, it gets so overheated. All right, let's see how we're doing. We've tapered down to 113 kilowatts. Says we'll make it there at 13%. Trip Planner wants to give us more of a buffer, but let's see how many miles it is, just so we can make sure it's 62 miles. We'll be totally fine. Uh, we'll arrive at 14% if we continue. Well, 293. Let's go average range over 30 miles, 154. I'm sure there's some crazy elevation here, but even at 48%, we'll be able to go 62 miles, even if it's uphill to the moon. So let's unplug and get out of here. Uh, Kingman, Arizona, one of the most known speed traps in the U.S., 10%. Those arachnids look really good. And we're ramping up the charge. This is an older 120 kilowatt capped charger, so I don't expect too much. But if we can get it up, I mean, this is already great to be 90. I was here the other day on my way to Vegas, and 90 is all it would do. Um, but that's okay. We are having a good time. Let's see what happens when I say let's go home. There's two other cars here, of course. There's that Model S on those nice arachnids, P100D, and then a Model 3 over here. We're all uh, on different cabinets, so this is perfectly spaced. So it wants to go to Flagstaff. I don't think there's any chargers in between. Let's take a look. No, there are not. Ah, oh, come on. This is always annoying when you have it in this mode. Yep, Flagstaff's the next one. 135 miles. We'll charge up to, I don't know, 50, 60%. Maybe I'll get a quick snack and yeah, should be pretty great. How are we looking? 91 kilowatt. That's all you can really expect from this charger. This is again, super hot temperatures. It gets well over 110 degrees and the chargers just get slammed. The new version three technology solves a lot of this, uh, these problems, but we just have to wait for these routes to get updated probably sometime in 2020. Well, these old chargers are slow. This will likely be our worst charge of the trip unless we run into traffic at another one of these. Um, we're down to the taper point internal uh, charge profile. So now it doesn't make a difference if we were on V3, V1, V2, doesn't really matter. This is all the car can take. So we're okay there. It just took a little while to get to this point. And by a little while, I mean like, I don't know, 15 minutes, uh, not a huge deal. So we're going to Flagstaff next, which is going to be busy and we may have to share but i've been there and i think that was a cool supercharger i don't really remember maybe i don't know uh but we will not make it yet we'll make it at minus four so we do have to charge up to 70 percent to make it at six percent roughly so maybe 75 percent. this will be kind of a long charge they really need a v3 here we are charged up to 10 percent uh, we're not charged up to 10%. We're charged up to 77%, but our arrival state of charge is now 11%. This looks like a busy supercharger that we're heading to, um, which means we'll have to share, but okay. We're getting 57 kilowatt now, not great speeds. Let's unplug and go, I guess. Yeah, no reason to keep sitting here. I'm kind of bored at looking at this Carl's Jr. Let's go change up the scenery, have a beautiful drive two hours over to the next one. Well, we are about halfway to Flagstaff and a little update. I drove too quickly, plus some headwind, I checked the Windy app. So anyway, we're gonna just take it easy now. And by driving too quickly, I was driving 85, um, which normally is okay, but 
surprisingly heading west to east. Normally you have a tailwind, but now we have a headwind. So we're gonna take it easy, go in the speed limit right now, just to make sure that we make it. Uh, it says we'll arrive at 3%, which, oh, that was a crazy pothole. Oh, I think the car is okay. Uh, tire pressures, holding steady. Oh man, oh wait. Uh-oh, losing tire pressure. We're pulling over. I may have popped a tire, shit. Okay, pulling over. Let's take a look. Oh, yep. This sucks. All right. I should probably get up there. But man, that was a crazy pothole. Here on the side of the road, you can see where the pothole just knackered that thing right there. Uh, it doesn't look like it's flat. It might just be losing air slowly. It is beautiful here. I pulled just off the highway, so we're in a little bit of a safer spot. Really windy though. Let's look at this wheel. Well, it's time for tires anyway. We knew that. Um, oh, wow. Look at this. The rim dug into the tire. Whoa. I have never, never seen that before. That's crazy. Okay. Uh, this is why you definitely want the right size tires. These are aftermarket cheap tires. But, however, uh, we put them on as a test. They're only $77. Uh, they honestly aren't bad, but you can see that even though they're the factory size, they didn't stick out past enough, and the wheel just dug in right here. I don't hear it leaking air. It says it's the same 32 PSI from when we drove, so I'm thinking maybe we hop back on the highway to the next rest stop and try and put some air in it. Maybe it just created a leak, and then it, then it pressurized itself again. I'm not sure. I think before I jump onto the highway, we should just drive it to make sure it's okay. So it's still showing 32, but it hasn't adjusted the other pressures yet. Um, hmm. It drives fine, that was low speed. I kinda don't wanna drive too much because we still have to make it to our destination as our navigation uh, shows, but I'm not worried about that. I know I can make it there if I just drive normally, so that's no problem. Uh, car drives fine. Oh, but when I turn, it loses air. I can hear that. I can hear when I put pressure on it. So turning right is not good, but left is good. So we're, because we're in the middle of nowhere, we're just, oh, we're losing air, 28 PSI. Oh man, uh, this is this is not good. Uh, let's just back it back into this lot. <laughs> this is Route 66 we're on right here. Okay. All uh, right, is there a town nearby? Nearest town. What? What is this doing? makes no sense. We're not doing this. Flagstaff. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's better. I see no town here. Oh, Ash Fork is a town. Ash Fork Shell. They probably have a tire filler. So it's five miles. If I keep the speeds down, will we be okay? I don't know. Can we take Route 66, the road we're on here, over? I don't think so. I think 40 is part of 66 now. Ah, uh, right. Th this is our only option. We're gonna have to call a tow truck either way, but, but, but let's try this. Okay, well, after playing around with it a little bit, it seems to only happen if I turn right that the tire digs into the wheel. I can feel the car pulling left, but the tire pressure is holding at 55. So we are going to take it super gentle, avoid some potholes, and not turn right 
we can't do this the whole way home and it's in the sidewall so I need to find a tire in Flagstaff we're going to the next exit just as a stretch Ash Fork that's a little town and we're at least gonna put some air in it and see if we can limp it like this but I imagine a blowout could happen if we hit a big enough bump so I am prepared and ready to take control of the car if necessary. Well, our adventure continues. I got quarters for the air pump, which took longer than expected. <laughs> it's so windy out here, it's crazy. Let's go put at least some pressure in this tire. I'll bring it up to, I don't know, 45 PSI. Hopefully it doesn't pop. Okay, it's leaking air now. I put it up to about 32 PSI. You can hear it leaking out through here. All right, we need to find a new tire because this isn't gonna work. The tire has stopped leaking, which means there's like a maximum PSI that it can handle. So whatever it's at, it's at now. This is all we can get in it. Uh, I'm gonna go look online to see if there's tire shops with these size tires in Flagstaff just so we can get one to limp us home because I have new wheels coming very soon with tires that'll be aerodynamically better than these but I still need to get home, which is on the other side of the country that way. <laughs> the tire is at the maximum air can hold. It'll probably lose a bit when we hit some bumps. We're 52 miles from the Flagstaff supercharger. We didn't lose anything going five miles air pressure wise, except when we turned into here because I had to turn right. So I'm thinking we try, gosh, this is probably such a stupid idea to drive on this tire, but there's literally nothing. We're in the middle of the desert and either way, I'm gonna to have to call a tow truck. But if I don't, we should at least try to get there. I just hope it doesn't pop in a place without cell service. That could be kind of sketchy. And it does go right through the mountains. But I think we're gonna to have to take the risk and go towards Flagstaff. At least we'll go one more exit up, see how the car is doing. We have two things to think about now. One is the tire, the second is the charge. There is a Chatamo charger somewhere around here, I think, so maybe we should top up the battery just to have some buffer in there in case something happens. I, uh, before we hopped on the highway, called Flagstaff Discount Tire. I always use Discount Tire, they're great. Um, they ordered a tire, it'll be there in the morning in this size, not the same brand, whatever. We just need to get home. That's okay, we'll figure it out later. Um, this is benefits of carrying a spare with you, but that'll be another topic for another video. So let's go to the charger since we have some time to kill uh, in Williams, which is 19 miles away, get some juice in the battery. That way, if for whatever reason we do have a flat, uh, the battery's not at 1% dead and you know that'll just cause more of a mess. So we'll go to the closest charger. It's a level two in a Chatamo. Hopefully we can get the Chatamo to work. And if not, we'll level to it it's by the Grand Canyon. Seems like a great little town. We'll make the best of it. So uh, off we go. Hopefully the tire holds to Flagstaff. It's like 50 miles. Oh, I really hope it holds. But again, worst case, we'll just have it towed in. I guess we have only 28 PSI. Oh no. I'm listening to see if the tire is losing air, but it doesn't sound like it. We're going to keep our eye on this. And oh, tense moments. Tense moment. I can't tell if it's the road or the tire, but the car has a pretty bad vibration going on here. I should say we could have just bent a wheel too. Um, hopefully it's not been to the point whatever replacement tire we put on can't fit, or I should say have a seal. Uh, the wheel doesn't appear to be bent visually, so I imagine that the Speed will stick and we can actually get the new tire on the car. The tire pressure is holding at 28 PSI so far. We're like five miles in, four miles in, something like this. So that's good. We just have a vibration. I'm going 55 miles per hour. People are just flying by, but I don't want to risk it by going faster. Uh, one, in case there's a blowout, of course you don't want to be going fast. And two, it, it doesn't seem to lose air at 55, so we're, we're just gonna go 55. At this point, we're in no rush. We have all the way until tomorrow uh, to get to Flagstaff. So we're just gonna take it easy and enjoy these beautiful views. Is 
says not to get off here, but I think we can, and I'd rather go at lower speeds if possible. So let's see if it recalculates getting off this way. I think it does look doable. And Williams is kind of a big town, it looks like, so with a whole bunch of hotels. Uh, so hopefully, maybe there's even a tire shop here, we'll see. Look at all the snow they've been getting here. This is cool. It's kind of warm. It's 47 Fahrenheit, and they still have snow. That's pretty cool. Uh, man, those views are incredible. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but that second peak is gnarly. This is the place to be if you have to break down. Wow. I hope we can find a tire here, uh, but if not, I kind of want to stay here instead of Flagstaff. This is gorgeous. And I have my little electric scooter I can ride on too for transportation. But let's go get this thing charging. Well, the tire's holding on. It loses a little bit of air every time I turn right. We're at the Chatamo station. I think it's a green lots. So let's try and get it going. All right. Well, I have like connected things and I tapped my charge point card because the green lots app wouldn't work. But it's actually charging. This is good, this is good. <laughs> okay, let's get in here. But why are we not actually charging? Let's see what the charger says. Huh, they have level twos here too, just in case, but it's zero amps. Come on, little thing, let's go. Well, I checked, uh, the PlugShare app and they said, yeah, it connects fine, goes good, but it doesn't put any power in. I've never seen this problem before with a charger. I was talking to the maintenance guy here. He's like, oh, I used to work for Tesla. I did uh, PV photovoltaic cell installations. I'm like, cool, let's try and reset this charger. So now he's literally, <laughs> you can't really see him over there, but he was <laughs> pulling apart panels, trying to flip fuse uh, fuses to try and reset the Chatamo unit. Uh, yeah, we'll give it a go. We'll see what happens. Anyway, this did not work. It still had the same problem. It's an internal problem. So we're back on this one. Uh, no real reason to leave or go or anything. We'll just charge up until, I guess, this evening. We have some time to kill. Uh, we can't really do too much driving around, but then we'll go over to Flagstaff. We'll supercharge it. And yeah, I think maybe I'll get some work done and take out the electric scooter for a rip. Oh yes, you know what this means. I did some research on Google. The sun is setting. However, there is a museum four tenths of a mile away all about the American highway system, which I love. It's very cool. It's all Route 66-ish stuff. So all the past while we're road tripping here in the future with electrified vehicles, let's hop on the scooter and rip on over there. This is one of the original gas stations on Route 66. Take a look, the mother road, love it. Been ripping the swag cycle around this old Western town. People think I'm crazy. They think it's like an alien invasion watching me ride around on this thing. <laughs> but I'm having a blast. Oh yeah, obstacle course, hardcore parkour, through a train, whoa! <laughs> Let's go back to the car, I think the battery's dying. All right, full speed, wide open. Yeah, running low on charge. Back at the car, and they're both charging up. I found this little power port here. It's definitely charging it, so this is great. This is about 50% state of charge, so it wasn't dead. It's just when you crank it open, voltage sag pulls. I don't know, the battery meter probably just reads voltage on this. So we are good. I'm gonna see if they have a restaurant in here because it's really nice. Oh yeah. A few hours have passed. We probably got pretty good charge. Let's take a look. Great. What's it gonna say? We make it to the, whew, I'm out of breath. I was running around. It's cold out there. Okay, the Flagstaff supercharger, plenty of range. The nice thing is about this buffer is if for whatever reason we end up not making it, getting stranded on the side of the road, I'll still have 20% battery at least to run the heater, which will keep me warm overnight. Um, but the plan is to get a hotel in Flagstaff. So before it gets too late and the trucking companies close, let's get on the road. Never mind, this is definitely too low for 
us to drive on. So what I'll do is I'll try the Tesla Roadside Assistance app and see if we can get it towed over to Discount Tire and Flagstaff. And I'm gonna to to put us back Street. on the tire on the uh, on the charger overnight because there's no way we're gonna make it like this. Uh, bummer. I've selected Tesla roadside assistance through the app electronically. I got a text message instantly that said, hey, yeah, your car qualifies for free tow, which is cool. I didn't think they towed for flat tires. They have in the past on my last Model 3, but I thought they stopped that. Anyway, it says covered. I put in discount tire and Flagstaff, South Milton Road, wherever we're going. And it seemed really easy. I wonder if they'll be able to send someone tonight or tomorrow. Either way, I really don't care. There's a great hotel here that's beautiful. I just had dinner there. I'm happy to stay here. I guess we'll coordinate it. I'd rather get the car there, not worry about it. Anyway, we're back on the charger, um, just getting some juice in. Battery's at 32%, so it'll be totally fine and healthy for it to sit at this state of charge overnight. If we do tow it to discount tire, that's no problem. So yeah, all is good. Really no issue. This has been kind of a non-event. The only problem we could have is if the tire doesn't arrive tomorrow morning then we're stuck in Flagstaff another day. Hmm. But we'll do our best. Well, that didn't take long at all. The truck is here, just about one hour, maybe an hour and a half. That's okay, I was getting, just getting some work done. Check out these sick electric bikes that we're gonna start working with these guys. I don't know, these things are crazy, crazy cool. Um, anyway, let's get this thing loaded up. Just met the driver, he's so nice. He loves electric cars. He's like, will this thing do a burnout up there? I'm like, hell yeah, well, Anyway, uh, <laughs> it just some people are great. Uh, Tesla roadside assistance literally requested it. Instantly got a text message. They sent the truck over. Super impressed. This was a great experience so far, as far as Tesla's side. I mean, I'm really blown away by that. I've never had a roadside assistance go that smoothly. Uh, I'm gonna unplug it. He's gonna drop the bed. We'll load this thing on up. Yes, sir. So there's Derek loading up the car. I just asked, can I ride in the Tesla on the back of the tow truck down the road for 30 something miles? And he said, yes, I've never done this. <laughs> this is so exciting. So I'm gonna watch some YouTube, I guess, and get some emails done on the back of a tow truck in the car. This is so cool. So in terms of settings, I wanna keep the heat on, but I don't wanna blind him. So I guess we'll go, I don't know, 70 degrees. And I have the car in camp mode. We both confirmed that the headlights will stay off so they won't be shining at him. Hopefully he shuts these flashing lights off. And I guess for now, this is pretty funny. We can kind of just launch YouTube. Uh, how cool is this? This is insane. We're <laughs> literally ripping it on the back of the freaking flatbed. I didn't think he'd let me stay in here, but I got YouTube and everything. And we're, this is so rocky. It is so unstable feeling. Every time he takes a turn, it feels like we're gonna tip over. But here we go, merging onto the highway. This is crazy. And we have made it safely to Discount Tire where the car will sit overnight. Plenty of hotels in the region. I'm gonna find one maybe within walking distance and then I will catch up with you all. I guess the next update will be when we're getting the tire on tomorrow. So I guess it, with the power of editing, it's now tomorrow. Here we go. Well, it is the next day. The tire is all done and we should be ready to rock and roll. Look at that, all good. Woo. Well, it is one o'clock PM. I grabbed a great hotel. There was a Hilton right down the street, blew through some work the whole night, really was very productive. Uh, discount Tire called me at like 11.30 today. They said, hey, the tire is in. Can we mount it on the car? I'm like, yeah, let me remote start it from the app. I just walked over here, left all my luggage back at the hotel, picked up the car, new tire on, nothing matches, but we'll have the new wheels and tires coming like 
within a week or two at the studio from Martian Wheels. They're their aerodynamic wheels that should help with range. They're 18 inch, we'll try them out. Uh, then I also have the Tesla referral 20 inch wheels coming too, so not a big deal. Um, the battery is frozen, we're at 31%. The supercharger is right down the street, so I have it preconditioning right now to heat up the battery. And man, I am so relieved. The wheel is definitely bent though, so we'll see how much the car chatter is going down the road. He said he tried to balance it as best he could, so there's probably just like five pounds of weights in the wheel. <laughs> you can see here that the battery is working hard to warm up. It definitely will not charge very quickly at all. So the so basically, I'm just gonna plug it in, we'll get lunch and we'll just let it charge up because if we decide to go home, the next supercharger is not for a while. So we definitely need to get some juice uh, yeah, here in Flagstaff for yep, to get to Gallup. So we'll be heated up by the time we get to Gallup and we're out of Flagstaff. But let's go, the TPMS should reset itself once the car starts driving. Okay, I looked on PlugShare, they said all of these stations basically aren't working, but someone recently said they got max power on this. I don't expect to get very high speeds here because the battery is cold. It sat outside overnight, it was 19 degrees last night, and so let's see what we ramp up to. Um, I'm sure we'll get a little bit of charge, but not too much. Well, this is already way better than I was expecting. <laughs> That's pretty great. Precondition for supercharge, and I kind of ripped it over here to warm up the battery. You can see the blue is gone anyway. So 50 kilowatts, great for this battery temperature. We're gonna be here to get to Gallup. So let's see how many miles that is. Hmm. 181 miles to Gallup. So we're gonna need quite the charge, a really long one. Um, just one for buffer, it's cold, big mountain passes, and I don't know how the car is gonna respond to that new tire. So let's uh, get some lunch here at the hotel. I've been here before in the Cannonball, it's a great spot. And then I'll come back to the car once we're, once we're charged up. Look. But let's take a look at the rest of our trip. We are charged up enough to make it to Gallup right now at uh, some low percentage, yeah, 11%. So we're fine there. Um, we're just right now planning the rest of the trip. So Gallup, then New Mexico, we're gonna rip through, go up through Oklahoma City, around this way, and then down. Now the reason we are doing this instead of this route here through Memphis, are there's a gap in superchargers here. I was mentioning earlier, Maybe it made it into the video, maybe it didn't, that there's literally a big gap from Oklahoma City to here. Um, so there's a ton of places you can stay over, is my understanding on I-40. So maybe what we'll do is do a long charge in Oklahoma City and then stay there, but I don't really know how our trip's gonna look, if we have any more issues. We're not even gonna be there until tomorrow, so that probably doesn't work. But what we really need to do is just get on the road, get home, because I got a lot of work to do. So let's just push it as far as we can today and try and make up some time. And with that, I think we should begin trip, unplug, and go. 181 miles uh, should be good at 85%. Doesn't look like there's anything crazy going on. This was just driving around town, warming up the battery. But yeah, we'll be all right, let's go. And we have arrived at 4% in Gallup. We are plugging in on one, that one's two. There's only four stalls here, this is it. Take a look at this, it says, welcome Tesla cars. Thank you very much. I've been in here before on the Cannonball, so back inside we go. Hey, another North Carolinian pulling in, look at that.
No way. Well, some amount of time has passed. I was honestly just sending emails, getting some work done. We are charged up enough to make it to Albuquerque at 70%. We should definitely get out of here. Probably overcharged a bit because it thinks we'll get there at 17%. Yeah, so let's get out of here and go. supercharger in Albuquerque it's at the Applebee's quite a few Teslas here okay but I see some open spots so let's hope uh, we get a charge I'm sure we will just lots of traffic coming around here I think I'm gonna take one of those two over there ramping up so this is great I think I may run in and get a little bit of dinner um, fantastic that's about all it can do here at this state of charge Tucumcari, I guess that's how you say it, is our next stop. However, there is a supercharger up this way, 150 kilowatt. Well, that's only 111 miles away. That might be our best bet. It looks like it's right off the highway. Um, that might be a little bit quicker just to charge here till we taper, but we'll see. Uh, maybe I can get some food in the next 15 minutes or so, and I'll eat it in the car. I don't know. We'll see went inside it's just crazy busy i mean i guess 7 p.m on a friday everyone's gonna get their applebee's um we're just gonna push it hope we find food at the next charger we're not getting great great speeds here i know this a lot of these chargers really need some upgrades i don't know if tesla is letting them go for version three or they're neglecting them for cost reasons or they just don't know i mean hard to say but there's really nothing we can do here we were getting 116 kilowatt before and now we're down to 95 we're not really sharing with anyone we're only at 16 17 percent so definitely an issue with the cabinet health um or or cable or who knows anyway we are making good progress our next stop we are going to go to that one in between here in tucumcari it's called santa rosa yeah santa rosa new mexico Again, we're at 9%. There's one other car here. The car wants to go all the way to Amarillo. Uh, how far away is this? Only 50 miles. And Amarillo is 150 miles. Uh, I don't know. The quickest thing is probably just to get up, go here, and then just hop from charger to charger but we'll leave once we taper, and that means we'll only need a tiny bit of charge there, but then it may be worth just stretching it to Amarillo. We'll see, we'll play it by ear. Well, I feel like we've been here for two minutes, but we have more than enough to make it to the next supercharger down the road, which is Tucumcari. Uh, most people wouldn't do this, but I one like to see more superchargers, and we probably shave, I don't know, five minutes off our time doing this. Anyway, we'll get there 25%. We're already tapered. If we're gonna do this, let's go now. That way we can take advantage of the faster charging curve at the next supercharger. Since we're sort of just cruising through the night, hopping from charger to charger, ripping it cannonball style, I'm not going to show you the speeds we are going. <laughs> we're just driving normally, don't worry. Um, I would like to mention we have an Instagram, uh, out of spec motoring, at out of spec motoring. I always post real time trip updates, fun things at the track. We have arrived at Tucumcari, cool supercharger. Take a look at this uh, pull through. Uh, another Holiday Inn Express. I don't mind that. There's hotels all around. We're going to continue pushing it. I'm feeling pretty good. 
Uh, this drive's going to be kind of boring for the next few stops, so I think I'm going to not do any of the driving clips and we're just going to go charger, 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 charger. I mean, it'll be a lot of driving in between, but this, the videos just get boring if you look at a black road with nothing going on. No one's on the roads. It's dead empty. So, Tucum car plugged in at 20%. The car's pulling full power, and I'll put the data on the slides, but I'll see you at the next charger. And welcome to Amarillo. Hotels all around, surprisingly all booked. We're gonna have to continue through. I think I'm gonna take a little nap. Radar detector saved us from the sneaky cop in the median, and then we saw all these crazy windmills just lighting up red, but uh, no problem. Pulled in 8% uh, state of charge, so we are definitely rocking and rolling. I can hear the car charging right now, so all is good. It is one o'clock in the morning and look at the traffic. I just looked it up. They are getting hammered with snow and ice all across the middle of the country. I'm so glad I didn't end up taking the northern route home. We're taking the southern route. Uh, speaking of this, there are no superchargers from Oklahoma City to Little Rock, Arkansas. This is a big stretch on I-40 that's missing. This northern route is about an hour and a half slower. Um, However, what I think I'm going to do is to take I-40 anyway, and there are plenty of Chatamo stations across, and I think I'll just need to Chatamo one time, and it should be quicker, plus it'll be an adventure, so why not do it just to add to the fun. And hello from Shamrock. I am waking up from a nap. We are charged up enough to make it to Oklahoma City, which is skipping one charger along the way. We're close to 75, 76%. Um, I love this charger. You can't really see it, but it's at an old gas station on Route 66 again. <laughs> so I guess I'll show you that on the way out but um, I'm gonna grab some water out of the trunk and then we should be able to hit the road to Oklahoma City. And I guess we're just gonna keep driving through the night. There's no reason not to. I mean, you just sleep at the charger, keep going, pretty easy. On the way to Oklahoma City, I figured we would stop in and check out this Weatherford Oklahoma Supercharger. I don't think I've been here before. We may have stopped here on the Cannonball. I don't know, maybe I was sleeping, who knows. Anyway, um, charging up here just for five, 10 minutes. We'll charge until we taper. We're gonna have to do a long charge in Oklahoma City anyway, because we're taking that Southern I-40 route with no superchargers. We're gonna rely on Chatamo and a backup destination charger. It might get a little sketchy, we'll see. But uh, yeah, we may as well charge up here until it, it tapers. We're at 20 something percent, so that's, that's fine. Okay, we are here in Oklahoma City, full charged at the supercharger. This was really not bad at all. It happened very quickly. Uh, to give you an idea, we're going a little bit out of, or I should say we're going the direct route east. The car wants to go up all the way and around and we're taking I-40. Now there are no superchargers through here. However, there's a Chatamo here, here, and here, here. So we're going to go to a Chatamo station somewhere around this Fort Smith area, maybe a little bit beforehand to just make sure everything is good. Uh, so that will be our stop. And then there's of course some other backups a little bit down the road that we'll be able to, but I've full charged it just in case as well. And also, are just waking up from a little nap. So this was quite nice. All right, we are plugged in here at the Chatamo. So I guess I click this and we should be good to go. How cool is this? Everything looks good. These are the nice BTC power units. Let's, uh, let's see, let's see how it goes. Look at this. This is great, 47 kilowatt. Oh yeah, 50 kilowatt, maxing it out. I just had a great breakfast in here. It's really windy and really cold, so we definitely need to stop and charge there. From there, it'll just be a little top up to get us to Little Rock. If we left Little Rock at 95%, we would be able to just make it, but I think it's better to go here. Now, as a backup option, there's an Electrify America Chatamo here, but everyone on PlugShare said it was kind of iffy. Um, sometimes they do have issues with Chatamo, although that typically has been solved in recent updates. We'll have it as a backup. 
and there's also a Tesla wall connector in Russellville. Anyway, we have some backup options, but I'm feeling pretty good about heading over here. We are still getting 40 kilowatt, so maybe we'll leave at 90%. Well, we're here at the next one. I plugged in, hit Shadowmo, and this one is free. Didn't charge me a thing, look at that. And uh, we're initializing, things are communicating, and we are charging, look at that. I haven't seen such reliable Shadowmo chargers ever, but I'm thankful because we would have been stranded without it. So we're all good. So in the screen, this is what the Tesla wants to do to get to this charger, but this is really silly. We're gonna click remove charging stops and we'll see how many percent we need to add, 10% only to get there. <laughs> we just shaved off like a half a day. Um, so this is definitely a good route. I don't know if it's quicker than going on this northern route and around. It's certainly more interesting and more fun for me because I like to have the adventure of charging and all that stuff. Some considerable time has passed. We're charged up to 82% doing 40 kilowatt. This is not a 125 amp. I actually think this is a 115 amp charger. So we're not able to get maximum speeds. Uh, it's 183 miles to get there. If we were tracking what we have been doing, we'd do about 200, give or take a couple miles. By the time I get out of the car to unplug, we'll be at 200 miles. Um, if we look at trip planner, it doesn't look to be too incredibly hilly, just kind of flat. It is really windy out. You can see, well, it was when I looked over here. Anyway, now it's not really windy. That's good. <laughs> so I think we should just unplug, keep the speeds in check and go. And then once we hit the supercharger network and get fast charging, we can just rip it all the way home. it on the i-40 stretch without super we are in little rock arkansas my first time at this charger and look at that plugged in juicing oh it feels good to get out of the car and stretch <laughs> oh yeah it feels good to be back on the supercharger network um, as this ramps up so the next stop is memphis tennessee now in memphis i'm going to pick up some of my friend's boxes because he's actually moving to raleigh so that can be good. Um, I've been to the Memphis Supercharger. I have been to all of these superchargers on the way home now. This is sort of, once we get to Memphis, I'm very comfortable <laughs> getting home. I kind of know what's going on here, but I don't think there's a charger in between here and Memphis. There is not. So we do have to make that stretch. And uh, let's see how many miles it is. It looked like it was around 150 or so. Remove charging stops. Kind of cumbersome how you have to do this. 162 miles, so we will charge up to 70 or 80 percent. -ish. Yeah, let's get some juice in the battery. Had a pretty good charge session. I just helped these new Model S owners. They literally are taking delivery of it used third party. They had no idea what to do. They're like, "Yeah, we just got this little electric car. I'm like, how do we charge it?" All right. Well, I showed them what to do and got them up to speed, and we're getting their car in their account. They have my email if they have any questions. Um, we're almost good to go, like probably five minutes. And then uh, Supercharger, we'll go see Mike and collect some boxes because he's moving to my city. And then we'll push it home. I don't know if we can make it home tonight. It's, we're still pretty far from home. Let's see exactly. I think it says we'll get home at like five o'clock in the morning. So we may stay overnight in the mountains somewhere. Um, yeah, like in Knoxville or maybe even Asheville, we'll stay overnight. That would be really perfect and then tomorrow blast, I don't know, we'll see. Welcome to Memphis. We have arrived at 7%. It's 3.50 in the afternoon. Ah, kind of a matching car. Uh, if I remember correctly, this one is slow or doesn't work, but let's find out. It's kind of busy. This is the busiest supercharger this trip. 
Well, it's ramped to about max it can do at this state of charge. So we should be good on this, uh, on this post. I'm going to coordinate with Mike. I'm going to pick up some packages from his work at CarMax, and then I will bring them to Raleigh. So let's, wow, I can't type. Car, what is going on? C, A, R, space, M, A, X. This one, right up the road. Now turn right onto Ridgeway Road. Perfect. Look at this thing go. We got it pegged at 150. That is pretty good. Yeah, someone in PlugShare said that this one was only doing 49 kilowatt, then they moved. Maybe they were sharing because this thing is super healthy. That is the maximum this stall can output. So what, what I think we'll do is we'll charge until we taper at 45-ish percent, something like this. And then we will go to Jackson, Mississippi. No, Jackson, Tennessee. And uh, there's like uh, some food there. I've been to that charger, so that's good. And then we'll just hop from charger to charger going over. Cannot confirm whether or not the version three in Nashville works. Wait, does it work now? Uh, reduce service. Hmm. Well, I picked up some boxes and I have some more in the trunk from Mike. I'm so happy he's moving to Raleigh. He is buying a P85 Plus in just a couple days. So we'll have another Tesla in the family to play around with two P85 Pluses. Uh, so that is really good. So yeah, all is well and uh, excited to get home. I don't know if I can make it through the night to get home. Maybe I'll stay close to the mountains. Maybe I'll push it. We'll see, I'm still feeling pretty good. I've been taking little cat naps on the chargers. <laughs> Welcome to Jackson, uh, what state are we in? Tennessee, not Mississippi. I always get that confused. Uh, it's at this old country Western place. There's like a train, there's a whole railroad museum. We've been in there, it's really cool. We are almost home. Oh man, we can't be more than, I don't know, 10 hours to home, something like this. 12 hours, hmm. Well, I don't know if we're gonna drive through the night. I'm not, that just blows. <laughs> it's such a long drive going cross country. I don't know what else to expect, but um, I mean, I'm loving it, having a good time, listening to a lot of pod, excuse me, listening to a lot of podcasts, so. Yeah, let's just keep on trucking. On our way to Dixon, Tennessee, and there is a restaurant called O'Charlie's. And O'Charlie's is just a general like burger place. I don't, I've only been once before, but I remembered last time I went through. So I mobile ordered online some, what did I get? Some boneless wings and uh, some soup. And it will be ready at the exact time we arrive. So I can get there, plug in, get food, unplug and then rip uh in in the uh in the effort to keep our time as low as possible to get home uh because i'm really feeling like we can just push it through the night this is a really long drive i'm definitely monitoring my uh you know awareness levels i'm definitely able to pay attention still feel okay but it, if any point i feel too tired i will definitely pull off and take a nap or sleep in a charger uh because it's not worth um, taking any risks for something just to get home. That, that's not worth it. Welcome to Cookville. My food is waiting for me in that building over there. We just started charging. So I'm just going to keep an eye on the screen, make sure it ramps up properly and then go get some food. Oh yeah. This is definitely the way to do, do dinner. Mr. Beast, some soup, some hot wings. Although can you really consider boneless wings, real wings? No. Um, hmm, that's okay. It's just easier to eat in a car, but yeah, can't ask for anything better than this. I had a long dinner. I didn't rush. I didn't want to eat and drive. So we're charged up to 85% right now. Um, the car, like I mentioned, wants to stretch it to Knoxville, which is just about 200 miles. We can do that if we're somewhere in that 90% charge rate. The car says, just stay here another 10 minutes and go and I honestly think at this point it's probably quicker just because of how far off the highway that Cookville supercharger is. Um, we'll have it as a backup just in case if the temperatures get cold but I'll hang out here for another 10 minutes and finish up these YouTube videos and then hit the road. I mean why not? 
Will you join me at the hotel? Uh, definitely not pushing it through the night. Starting to get a little tired on that drive. Definitely not safe just to keep going. It's better just to pull off. Hotels are so cheap anyway. And uh, so we found a nice spot with a charger. There's another Model 3 there. It's six kilowatt per port. So we will be full charged by the morning. I'll probably do 90% and then bump it to 100 in the morning so the pack doesn't just sit up there all night. Um, and I'm also not gonna start charging for a couple hours um, because we're around 45% and it's good for the battery just to like understand where it is. We've just been driving and charging and charging. So it, I'm just gonna let it sit like this for two hours before I start charging, scheduled charging. But for now, I'm going to bed. <laughs> so I'll see you guys in the morning for the final few hours of the trip. Good morning, it is the last day of the trip. I'm excited to get home. I have so much editing to do. I haven't even started. We have like six videos out of this trip. Um, we were charging up on the level two, but this is a problem and it's totally my mistake. When I wanted to let the battery sit at the state of charge last night, 40-ish percent, whatever we pulled in with, um, I had set to start timer at 11.45 a.m. instead of p.m. So I woke up and the car hadn't, <laughs> hadn't charged, um, which is fine. We can absolutely make it to the charger because we've gained about 20%, 15%. It lost a bit because it was cold in sentry mode overnight, but uh, we're at 55-ish percent right now. I kicked it on. It's only six kilowatt, but hey, that <laughs> these are just the funny mistakes you make when you're really tired. So I'm glad I, I stopped. I'm glad I got the hotel. I feel refreshed. Uh, no hair gel today. Definitely time for a haircut though. And Starbucks and home. These are our two priorities for this morning. So let's get on it. Just waiting in, of course, the Starbucks line. This was right down the street from the hotel. Let's look at our trip plan for the day. So we're going to continue with yesterday going to Knoxville. And then it wants us to do a crazy lawn charge and go to Hickory. But I'm going to tell you that's not possible because we are going to rip it. So we're going to do a long charge there. Go to Asheville, which why is Asheville full? Maybe because it's a long weekend. Oh, no, we're OK. There's also Chatamos there, worst case, but We'll charge until we get up there, this huge elevation gain going up into Asheville, up in the mountains, and then we lose a ton of elevation going to Hickory, and then we'll probably do a Greensboro and then home. And that way we can just do a ton of short charges, which will save time. Welcome to Knoxville, Tennessee. This is really, I feel like I'm back on my local network. I come here often uh, because the Dragon is like an hour this way, not even. Anyway, uh, car is looking good. The wheel is definitely still bent from the flat tire. Man, the new gray performance wheels look so good. Anyway, let's get this thing juiced up enough to get to Asheville. Let's see how that looks. 126 miles, so we're gonna need, I don't know, 70% state of charge to make it there. So let's see. Yeah, well, once this gets up a little bit, it'll show us more, but let's just at least, uh, let's get some good charge here and we're on getting max speed for this state of charge. This is great. And time has passed, not too much. We are charged up to 72%. I think I probably overcharged, but I was just getting some work done. Uh, so yeah, we'll make it there at 15%, it's 126 miles. That shouldn't be any problem at all. Let's uh, unplug, but if we're at 72%, that car's got to be done by now because they weren't even around. Oh, people need to move their cars when they're done supercharging. This does not look good. The whole highway is closed. I was wondering why we didn't see anyone. Oh, brutal. That is, that sucks. We are in Asheville, one of my favorite places in the world. We've arrived at 12%, totally fine. There was a lot of traffic, so we didn't really get to rip it on the beautiful road over here. Even though it's a highway, it is gorgeous. Come on, let's go. There's that. Oh, there's some good food options here. I might run inside and go to their mall food court and get something yummy. Uh, I have never seen it this busy. Must be a weekend thing. I'm always here. I don't know. I guess we try to avoid Asheville on the weekends. We come here a lot for vacation, but during the week. 
Uh, oh no, this doesn't look good. We're sharing with a Model S. There's no open cabinets. So we may be here for a little while. I, I always pick the Model S's if I can to share with over Model 3 for no other reason than hopefully those don't pull as much juice, but you know, it depends. And again, only 25 kilowatt, but that's okay. We'll run inside, get some food, and we only need a little bit to get to Hickory. And Hickory is right here. And it's all downhill. So yeah, just a short little trip, 16% or so more. The Model S next to us left pretty early actually. So we got a great charging session. We're charged up to 50%. I scarfed down some food and we're ready to go to Hickory. So I'm gonna unplug and then we'll see you at Hickory. We are in Hickory, North Carolina. This is one of the famous superchargers because everyone here lined up their big trucks to block the supercharger. But that, I don't know, I like trucks, so whatever. Um, yeah, we are gonna charge here very quickly until we taper and then do a quick, quick, quick stop. In, uh, maybe just even a five minute stop. And that should be just a tear quicker of getting home than charging here because we can easily just charge here and drive straight home. But if we do just a quick stop in Greensboro, it's literally right off the highway. I bet we could shave five to 10 minutes off of our total trip time. Well, I was going to leave, but my friend Zeb showed up. So I guess we'll just hang out in Hickory for a while. Okay, so I ended up staying here way long because I was talking to my friend Zeb, who also runs the local Tesla Owners Club thing. He's just a good friend. It's so funny to run into him. They're going skiing here in North Carolina this weekend. All right, so now the car wants to go to Greensboro. What on earth? That makes no sense. It wanted to just go straight home before, and now it doesn't? That is silly. Trip Planner's got some bugs. But I guess that's why they say it's in beta. Anyway, we should be able just to make it straight home from here now. No more stops. This could have been our last supercharge of the trip. It's only 168 miles. I think we can do it. And guys, we are home sitting in the driveway. I cannot find the garage door opener, so I can't put the car in. I scheduled charging to start one hour from now. We're at 4%. That way the battery will get a good baseline and then it will complete charging at 90% so I can kind of show at the top and bottom the BMS, um, which I don't usually charge to 90%. I usually do 80% every day, but we're just gonna let it sit at 90 and sort of calibrate itself, something you should always do after a long trip or, you know, basically this was 7,000 miles. Let's see exactly how long it was. 6,524 miles, less than I was thinking of, of just the car never completing a charge, just kind of running up, being slammed dead, full charge, just, you know, it's hard on a car. So yeah, we're gonna uh, just let it charge up to 90% overnight, let it sit there. And I appreciate you guys coming along on the trip. Uh, I hope the videos aren't too long for you. We have a lot of other fun stuff coming and uh, appreciate if you've watched this long, appreciate all the support you've shown out of spec. We are gonna have a big 2020. Have a great one. We'll see you guys on the next road trip.